So at this point of the Mossberg 590 project, um, you can go back and check out the last two videos, Jeweled and Another Break. And in those videos, um, I show the making of the muzzle brake and the jeweling of the shell lifter. <clears throat> so we're at the spot now in this build where all the machining's done, um, the barrel's been threaded, 32 threads per inch for the custom made door breech muzzle brake, the bolt's been jeweled, the lifter's been jeweled, and I've got the gun prepped, disassembled and prepped for the Duracoat firearm finish. Um, I choose Duracoat because it's simple. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it at home. Um, it's very affordable and they have a huge product line. Um, if you don't want to use an airbrush, they have a product that's in a can with the hardener ready to go. You just buy the product like this and you can finish up to two or three firearms with just this one can. Um, I saved you the boring details of disassembling and stripping the gun. There's thousands of videos out there on disassembly of the Mossberg and reassembly. So what I did is I completely disassembled the gun. I prepped it for Duracoat. The prep is pretty simple. Basically what I did is I first used acetone and cleaned off all the grease and oil. Um, I then used the Duracoat product uh, tr True Strip, which they recommend for prepping the surface. And then I use um, a red Scotch Bright to even out and scuff up the surfaces, give the Dur Duracoat something to bite onto. So, next step is uh, we're going to get this ready to uh, start painting Duracoat. Um, I think you're going to enjoy the next set of this video um, in painting this gun. And then, of course, after it's painted, we have to let it harden and then reassembly. So, hope you enjoy. Almost ready to Duracoat the uh, Mossberg 590 project. Uh, since I'm using multiple colors and then a clear coat of Duracoat, I decided to use my um, airbrush setup. Um, this is just a hobby store airbrush, um, probably around 50 bucks, you know, not really sure. I've had it for a long time. Um, I use an extended air, ho um, air hose for the airbrush. Uh, so this is a 50 foot hose. Um, my air compressor has a water separator, but I also add one at the end of the hose too. Uh, this will collect any moisture that may get through to the air gun or to the airbrush. Um, I basically mix my Duracoat in a clear jar. It's got graduations on here, so I get my, my 12 to 1 mix of the Duracoat and hardener correct. Um, and I never like to put the hardener in the bottle of Duracoat because that way you have a longer shelf life um, and working time if you mix it in smaller quantities. One ounce goes a really long way. Um, today I'm going to uh, paint the um, matte black and the white. So um, I'm going to mix one ounce of the matte black, put the hardener in, and then transfer it to the airbrush bottle, uh, which of course goes onto the airbrush itself, and spray the matte black complete that and then uh, let that harden for probably about an hour then I'll move that in and then this is getting the the, uh, the base white coat so let me take you outside and, and show you my setup it's the state-of-the-art state-of-the-art spray booth and uh, 
and then we'll uh, get going on this. Um, bring you back and we'll mix up the dirt coat and get the air pressure set right and go from there, man. This is my state-of-the-art spray booth. Basically a piece of 5 8 rebar hung across the fence post and fence. And here's all my parts ready to be Duracoated. Uh, they're just hanging on uh, wire. And I have them to where I can get all the angles and reach all the nooks and crannies. And the nuts and bolts I basically put through a piece of cardboard. That way I can get both sides. And then uh, let me show you how I use magnets to paint some of the parts. This is just an old Coors Light box. And basically what I do is uh, for metal parts um, that I want to spray and I don't want them blowing around, I just basically use a magnet. And I hold them and I use a magnet on the other side of nuts and bolts and it holds them really well, especially these rare earth magnets. So just another little trick. So uh, let's get our stuff mixed up and uh, start painting. I use acetone to clean everything and uh, I usually uh, blow it through the um, airbrush first. Make sure there's no debris or dust or anything like that. And then um, I'll lay down some clean paper towels and, and do my mixing. And just basically mix what I need. Um, one ounce is way more than enough for that stuff I just showed you. Um, so maybe I'll just do a half ounce with the hardener. Um, I hate, always hate running out. I'd rather have a little extra than run out. So uh, let's get started here, man. I got the air hose on the regulated, regulated side, or low regulation. Um, gonna run about 40 PSI, see how that goes. Um, let's run some acetone through the airbrush. I just put some in this, this bottle here. Uh, you want to make sure your vent hole is clear. If not, you will not pull material up through the, through the tube and into the um, airbrush. I like using acetone too because you can kind of get a, um, you can kind of get a, a nice pattern uh, figured out before you put material in there and waste too much material. So let's get that. Why isn't that going all the way on there? Okay, got that on. Let's get our air hooked up. There we go. Okay. Pull that bad boy out. I don't know if you can see the stream, but there we go. This is a number one tip, by the way. It's the largest tip for this airbrush. It seems to work the best. All right, that's good. Okay, let me get our uh, material mixed up and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, I just got the, um, the matte black Duracoat about um, one ounce. I just added the hardener. So I'm gonna mix it up real good. I got the um, base for the bottle already on the airbrush, ready to go. Basically what I do is I just put a, a sealed top on this so I mix it up real good. Okay. We're ready. So what I'll do is um, I'll get this attached to the airbrush, I'll move the camera to outside and we'll just start painting.
Nice light coats at first. This stuff goes on very nice, very smooth. There's something I wanted to mention too with the hardener. If you go with the 12 to 1 mix, if you add a little extra hardener, you're going to get a more glossier finish. If you add less hardener, you're going to get more of a matte finish. So you can play with it a little bit and adjust your final, your final finish. You're probably wondering why I'm not wearing a respirator. First of all, this is an airbrush, so there's very little overspray, and I'm in a well-ventilated area. If I was inside of a, sp a spray booth or something, I'd say, yeah, but you know what? I'm not even smelling this material. The slight breeze that we have right now is just carrying it away. Okay, this will be the final coat of the matte black. Beautiful, it's flowed out perfect. Looks fantastic. And of course I have plenty left. Hard to tell, but make sure I got all the little nooks and crannies. It's about 80 degrees right now. Very, very light breeze. Very dry air. Perfect conditions for this. Okay, we're gonna call that good. Okay, that was a little less than an ounce, and that's how much I got left. The stuff goes pretty far, and I put several coats on there to make sure I got a good, good coverage. So uh, let me bring you in closer. All right, I'll try to sweep this steady. Better than going freehand. There's the door breech muzzle brake. That's the shell tube cap right there. And there's the little parts on magnets. All right, I'm gonna clean everything up with the acetone, get all the matte black out of the gun, out of the uh, uh, airbrush, 
and out, out of all the anything the matte black touched we're going to clean up because the next uh, the next step is base white and that's going to be the rest of the stuff So let me finish getting that cleaned up and then we'll get the white ready to go. It's been about two hours now. All the matte black Duracoat um, I can handle. So I basically took it off of the my uh, painting rack and moved it inside. And now it's, uh, I'm ready for the next color. Uh, the next color is going to be all the big major parts and that's going to be base white. Um, you're probably wondering why I'm painting a Mossberg 590 white. Well, stay tuned and you'll find out. Uh, airbrush is all cleaned up with acetone. Uh, cleaned all, all, everything up that I mixed the matte black in, so everything's uh, pretty, pretty cleaned up. So now we're going to mix up the white. Uh, since it is white and it's going on a dark color, I'm going to mix up two ounces um, to get the coverage. I'm probably going to be mul uh, multiple layers before I get the nice uh, chalk white I'm looking for uh, in that color. So let's get to it. Let's go with two ounces. That's going to be half. Uh, that's going to be half this bottle. This is a four ounce bottle. So there's two ounces. I recommend measuring this, but I've, I've done enough of this where I know exactly the sheen that I want and how much it's going to take to, to obtain that sheen. So, but I, I recommend measuring it out. It's a 12 to 1 mix. Like I said before, you can play with the mix. You can play with it. Um, more harder will give you a shinier finish. Less harder will give you a more matte finish. And I recommend, you know, test if it's a real, if it's a real picky, picky firearm or part that you're Duracoating, I would definitely uh, play with it first on a test piece. Okay, so I have two ounces of uh, white in here. Um, I can only fit uh, about an ounce in here. So I'm going to fill this up. This is my mix with the hardener. And then uh, I'm going to put that in here, put it on the airbrush, and then we're going to go outside and start coating it. So let me move you to outside. Just doing some test spraying on a, a piece here. Okay, here we go. Just going to lay it on nice and light right now. Just build them up, little by little. This stuff flashes off pretty quick. 
especially in these conditions that we're working in right now. All right, I mixed up two ounces uh, of the Duracoat with the hardener. And you saw everything I painted out there. I have that much left, over half an ounce left. So that's how, how far that stuff goes. And then uh, I'll take you back out there and show you the, some of the results. Guys, I'm gonna go freehand here to show you the results of the white here. Try to keep it steady. I got the sun right over my left shoulder, so. There's the barrel. And here's the heat card. That's the Duracoat white on the Mossberg, and you can read that clearly. So there's the results of the white. Um, stay tuned for the next step.